What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So, I did get to check out some clips from Monday Night Raw. Um, I wasn't able to upload the video or even record it because I've been busy these past couple days just trying to get content out for the main channel. But best believe, I wanted to make this video because I thought this was important to talk about and to post on our channel. So, Drew comes out to basically talk about what happened at the Royal Rumble, him beating Oldberg. Now, I want to make this little uh, uh, announcement here. In my last video, people felt some type of way because I kept calling Goldberg Oldberg. Well, guess what? I'm sorry. I'm going to call him that because he doesn't need to be out there. Let's keep it a stack. He does not need to be out there wrestling anymore. You guys saw what happened with The Fiend. You guys saw what happened with uh, The Undertaker. Both of those matches were overseas. Both of those matches probably shouldn't have taken place. At the end of the day, Goldberg pretty much killed The Fiend's momentum, in my opinion. His momentum was never the same. He couldn't beat somebody in their damn 50s. I'm not supposed to take him as a credible threat anymore. That whole situation with The Undertaker, that was just a shambles of a match. It sounds good on paper, maybe 10 years ago, but no, that, that's... That match shouldn't have never happened, in my opinion. And I'm sorry, just Goldberg coming back to steal these these high-profile moments from these younger, talented um, wrestlers is... I don't like it. I would say the same thing if The Rock... Not The Rock. If Stone Cold came back. If Stone Cold came back all the time or frequently to have these high-profile matches with other younger talent and he don't put them over or they don't get pulled over or put over... I would call it Stone Cold, Old Stone Cold. Like, it's, it's not to be disrespectful. It's just the facts, man. Goldberg shouldn't have even have a ma had a match at the Royal Rumble. That's just in my opinion. I didn't care for the match. But either way, he started talking about Oldberg and his, you know, him, you know, earning his respect and, you know, how it was a grueling match. It wasn't. But he's just trying to sell the match for what it was for those who missed it. Then out comes uh, Edge, I want to say. Edge comes out there or whatnot. Actually, no, I take that back. I think he started talking about Edge prior to. No, no, I take that back. He did. Edge came out there. Edge, the, the music hit. Edge comes out there. He's the Royal Rumble winner. He comes through the ropes. And basically, Drew McIntyre is giving him all this type of praise and, you know, admiration. And Edge says something pretty serious. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I could have been a mentor to you. But what's wrong with you, man? Like, when you hear my music, you know I've won the Royal Rumble. You should be in defensive mode. Like, you should, he said, you should be kicking my head through these ropes. As soon as I come down here, you should be ready to fight because I am a legitimate threat to your title now. It shouldn't be buddy, buddy. No. And I like that he said that because it makes sense. At the end of the day, when it comes to you being the champ and you admiring somebody, it's different when you're admiring somebody and they're not coming for your title. But when they're starting, they have an opportunity to take the title from you. All that admiration, that goes out the door. You put that aside. It's business now. And uh, it's like if Stone Cold won the Royal Rumble, but then all of a sudden he comes out there to, you know, somebody giving him adulation on him winning the Royal Rumble. You know what Stone Cold would do? He'd be like, I appreciate that, son, and stun him. He would give him a Stone Cold stunner and be like, I'm facing you at WrestleMania. Get prepared. I'm taking your title. That's what happens. You know what I'm saying? You're giving him adulation. You're putting your guard down. And I, I, I do feel that Drew McIntyre, even though he's a great face champion, he has gotten a little bit softer. You know what I'm saying? He's... He's gotten softer in the sense of his character. He's not as aggressive as he should be. He is with heels, but this is a situation where I feel like, hey, man, Edge is not playing. He didn't come back just to say, I want to win, and that's it. Or, you know, I just want to win the Royal Rumble and, you know, headline WrestleMania one more time. No, he's trying to win a championship, so you got to take him as a serious threat. So I did like the fact that Edge mentioned that. Um, and there, it looks like they're trying to plant seeds of him potentially going against uh, Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania at this year's WrestleMania. I'm not sure. 
you know, um, there has been some rumblings on the dirt sheets that it's not even going to potentially be uh, Drew that he's facing. It may actually be Roman Reigns. So I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video to give my real in-depth thoughts on that. But after that, of course, uh, what's his name? Sheamus comes out there basically defending Drew um, and they, they, you know, Drew's like, yo, I got this. I can handle this. Edge leaves the ring. And then all of a sudden, uh, Sheamus hits Drew with a bro kick. So I'm guessing they're going to start their little potential feud into Elimination Chamber. So I doubt that, that this will be the WrestleMania match. But I believe this is going to be a feud leading into the potential WrestleMania match. So I thought that was a nice opening segment. I thought it was interesting. It, it, WWE is not giving you a clear hint that if he's going to face Drew or not, but they're teasing it. So I like that. They're not giving it away too quickly. Um, then I want to say throughout uh, throughout the show, uh, Randy Orton has you know he 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 gets into his little sadistic mind of thinking, okay, congrats, Edge, you won, but. You know what I'm saying? You should have stayed home. You know, all the stuff that I did to you, I was doing that because I love you. You know what I'm saying? I wanted you to stay home. You won the Royal Rumble. Congrats. But do you think you're going to make it to WrestleMania? No, I'm not going to let you make it to WrestleMania. That's pretty much Randy Orton's thought process. I love you so much. Not only am I going to attack you with chairs and, you know, potentially put you on the shelf and try to end your career. I'm going to RKO your wife. Because that's how much I love you. Friends. How many of us have them? Um, and then, of course, Edge promo response to that was passionate as always. He's basically like, yo, Randy, you are a black cloud. And I'm going to get rid of you tonight. This ends tonight. This is it's done after this. I'm going to take care of business. I will get rid of you and move on to WrestleMania. I thought... That was pretty cool. That that little exchange. I knew they were gonna eventually have one more actual match, and I think this was the perfect timing to have that match on Raw. This doesn't need to be a pay-per-view match. This needed to be the last time they interacted with each other on that level. So, um, like I said, I really kind of skipped through Raw because I ain't really care for anything else. I just went to see what the Edge storyline was going to be, how what what were they going to do, and uh, they ended up having their match. You know, it what you, it's what you've seen before. It was nothing too crazy. You know, Edge is selling the effects of lasting almost an hour in the Royal Rumble. He's kind of banged up. He's selling that. And, you know, they're having their, you know, it was a nice TV match. It was enjoyable for what it was. But then as Edge or Randy Orton's about to go ahead and hit the infamous RKO, out of nowhere, Alexa Bliss is sitting on the top turnbuckle. He turns around and she's bleeding from the mouth and looking at him and then all of a sudden he randy orton obviously is distracted he turns around gets hits with a spear one two three randy uh orton loses the match edge wins this feud is done and he can focus on wrestlemania that's how the feud ends so i'm, I'm guessing they're literally going with randy orton in the fiend at WrestleMania, they've been building this up for since since uh since uh, the fiend has been set on fire. They've been building this up. Obviously, he's coming back. The question is how, what he's gonna look like. But they've been using Alexa Bliss as this bridge to continue that storyline. I'm kind of intrigued, but I'm kind of not. The only reason why I'm kind of iffy about it because it's just like I don't know if I can buy into the fiend anymore. His character has just been so depleted at this point. He can barely win any matches. It's just like I don't, I don't really know if I do care. But it, it's somewhat interesting. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably try to keep some high hopes about it. So, one thing I want to talk about before I do in this video is I want to give my thoughts and opinions on these rumors that Roman Reigns may be the opponent for Edge. Now, on paper, it sounds great actually. Roman Reigns is probably the biggest heel in the industry, in my opinion. Not even just WWE, in the industry. 
Edge winning the Royal Rumble, coming back, trying to relive his dream and recapture a title he never lost, even though it's not the WWE Universal Championship, because the WWE Universal Championship hadn't been created, but that's not here or there. He's just trying to recapture a, a major championship. Fine, whatever. Him living out that dream, that's awesome. That's amazing. It tells the story of a person who persevered and never gave up. All right, cool. Going against somebody that's on this massive ego trip and doesn't give a damn about anybody else except him and his family. So, heel face dynamic, you can never go wrong with that at a WrestleMania. I think the build up to this match will be fantastic. The promos will be fantastic. Do I think this should happen? No. Here's why. Roman Reigns, who, whoever he faces, will not lose. I want him to face Daniel Bryan. But guess what? I don't even want Daniel Bryan to win. Because guess what? Roman should be the guy to win. Anybody that faces Roman at the Royal Rumble, I mean at WrestleMania, will lose. It does not make sense for Roman to win the match. I mean for Roman to lose the match at any point, anytime soon. Because he's one of the best heels in the business, bro. Hands down. So, you have Edge come back. He wins the Royal Rumble. You could have gave that to uh, another person that, you know, a young and up-and-coming talent. You could have gave that win to them, but you gave it to Edge. I'm sorry. If you're going to give Edge the Royal Rumble, and he entered in that number one, and he won it all the way, you're going to put the strap on him. It, it only makes sense. But instead, you have him face Roman, and we know he's going to, he should lose that he loses then it does you know it makes sense all right cool it doesn't matter roman is that guy i crushed your dreams it makes him the ultimate heel but if he beats roman reigns you've killed all of roman reigns momentum he can beat all these younger talent that his that are that is in his age group but he couldn't beat someone that is damn near you know what I'm saying double his age like what he couldn't beat someone that is a uh, you know what I'm saying like Someone that was part of the Attitude Era. A guy that's had, I don't know how many countless surgeries. You know what I'm saying? He just came back from injury. Now he can't beat him. And I love Edge. I think it would be a fantastic match. But like I said, it doesn't make sense to book that match only because Edge would have to lose. And I kind of think you you gave that, that Royal Rumble win to somebody that you could have gave it to anybody else that could potentially use that to get themselves a championship shot and win it you know what i'm saying edge could have came back lost the royal rumble and still face roman reigns and still put him over i don't know if they're going to put roman over for the sake of edge you know what i'm saying so that's why it's a little bit too much uncertainty on that end now if they go with the drew route i think it makes sense you can give the strap to uh, to edge in this situation even though they're both faces you can turn drew heel you can turn Drew heel because of this whole situation because his mentor beat him, took his title, took his opportunity away from him, and now Drew feels some type of way. Granted, I like Drew as a face, but you can turn him heel in this situation if you wanted to. Just keep it a stack. So, it's, I don't know, man. It's, like I said, they, they both could work. I just would prefer him to face Drew McIntyre because on the Raw end of things, Drew really doesn't have an opponent. At least on the SmackDown end of things, you can find an opponent for Roman Reigns to face at WrestleMania. Drew needs a viable opponent. He doesn't have one at this present moment. So, comment down below. Let me know. Who do y'all think is to face? Should he face Roman Reigns? Should he face Drew McIntyre? And let me know down in the comment section why. I want to get y'all opinion on why he should face one or the other. Uh, I gave my opinion on it, and I really want to have this discussion with you guys because this has been the topic of discussion ever since the Royal Rumble ended. Who should Edge face? So, comment down below. Let me know. I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 40K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.